Hi and welcome back to the Business Career College video series. In this particular video we're going to have a look at exclusions. This is not a terribly difficult concept but I find people sometimes get a little bit confused around this and especially maybe if you haven't read a life insurance contract before and honestly I know it sounds tedious but reading a life insurance contract is a good way to get a better grip on this concept. So what are we going to look at here? Well, we're going to see what an exclusion is. We're going to look at some standard sets of exclusions. We'll have a quick look at the suicide exclusion as well. And we're going to look at underwriting exclusions. So what is an exclusion? Well, if this is what causes the loss, the insurer will not pay out. It's simple. So you'll find somewhere in the contract language that says, if it's this particular event that arises, and the language has to be very clear here, the way the contract law works is if we don't get the language just so, and there's a dispute later on, the courts will rule in favor of the insured almost certainly. So insurers will be very explicit and very detailed in what they are excluding. And we need these. They can be frustrating, but exclusions are useful because it allows the insurer to keep premiums at a manageable level for most people who are buying insurance. Without exclusions, then, insurers would have to increase premiums across the board or have more fights about claims or some other version of that. So exclusions really allow insurance to work the way it's supposed to work. Uh, interestingly, actually, in 1895, Sun Life Assurance of Canada became the first insurer anywhere in the world to offer a life insurance policy without an exclusion. Prior to that, lots and lots of stuff was excluded as a norm on life insurance contracts. So you would have broad geographic exclusions or work-related exclusions, but that all went away in 1895, and today exclusions are really the exception rather than the norm with life insurance contracts. So the standard exclusions that we see. Well, on a life insurance policy, the only exclusion you'll see that's a standard, and it doesn't have to be there. Insurers actually have the choice not to include this, but I'm not aware of any Canadian insurer that doesn't include this as a matter of course. And that is a suicide exclusion, but only as it applies to a su suicide committed in the first two years after a policy is issued or reinstated. After that, if suicide is the cause of death, the insurer should still pay the claim. Now, with other kinds of policies, we'll find more exclusions. And really, to know the exact set of exclusions that would apply, you would have to actually read the policy document. So, for example, accidental death and dismemberment policies feature a broad set of exclusions. Tons of stuff is excluded here. With disability insurance, eh, you'll find with the more expensive products, disability insurance has very few exclusions. But as you get into the more affordable products, more stuff will be excluded. Long-term care, it varies a little bit, but typically with long-term care, you don't find a whole lot excluded. But self-inflicted stuff and drug and alcohol related stuff often is. Uh, critical illness insurance doesn't tend to have a lot of exclusions. Self-inflicted might be, but we'll see on the next slide that sometimes it has exclusions added at underwriting. When we get into specialty risk products, so if you have somebody who's hard to insure and you have to deal with a specialty risk insurer, in order to keep those products affordable, they often will add exclusions. And very similar to that, guaranteed issue products, because they do so little underwriting, they will also add some exclusions. So they might have exclusions around any loss in the first two years, for example. So that covers the sort of standard set of exclusions you would find on a contract. Now, actually, recently, we've had one major Canadian insurer announce that it is going to start selling a product, a life insurance policy that will have a broader set of exclusions on it. And then we have underwriting exclusions. So these would not be the same with every policy. These would be added particular to your circumstances. 
most life insurance policies will be issued with no extra exclusions. Today it's the middle of 2016 and we are finding quite a few insurers making heavy use of a mountaineering exclusion as well as a travel exclusion. So the mountaineering exclusion really covers off if you have somebody who is killed while they are rock climbing or uh, some other mountain based activity. Um, and that would get added because at the time of underwriting we had some indication that that was a likely risk. Travel, if you have somebody who spends extended periods of time outside the country, a travel exclusion will often get added, um, especially if they're traveling in potentially more dangerous parts of the world. And this is one that uh, philosophically I have personally a little bit of a tough time with. Um, especially given that so much of Canada today is made up of people who do come from other parts of the world and you really will be surprised at the regions that sometimes get included in that high risk group. So the travel exclusion is one that especially if you deal in a lot of markets of first generation Canadians you might want to get more comfortable with which insurers are going to deal with which regions in that sort of high risk group and how to deal with clients who do spend extended amounts of time outside the country. On the living benefits side, it's very common to add exclusions at the time of underwriting. This is especially true with disability insurance. You'll sometimes find it with critical illness as well. Now, it may be possible to negotiate with the underwriter. This is true in many regards, but we see it in particular with exclusions. So maybe we can say to the underwriter, you know what, we don't want that exclusion, can you increase premiums? Sometimes underwriters will be willing to do that. Maybe with a disability policy, they might go for an increased waiting period or a reduced benefit period in exchange to reduce an exclusion. And sometimes you may be able to get a policy re-underwritten after the policy has been enforced for a period of time and thereby re uh, remove an exclusion. So I hope this helps us to understand how exclusions work. They are an important part of insurance contracts. Um, they're something we should be paying attention to. Our clients should be aware of what exclusions are in place because, of course, it's going to affect how premiums are paid. But clients should also look at it and recognize that exclusions are necessary to keep insurance affordable. I hope that helps. Please enjoy your continued studies. Thank you very much.